Hello and welcome to this special report from OTT Wrestling. I'm your host, Angus McAnally, and joining me is none other than the man himself, Juice Robinson. Juice, thank you so much for coming on the show. Dude, I'm having a blast, man. Let's go back a couple of years. You made a pretty big decision upon leaving NXT to go and make your way in Japan, but you didn't go over the easy way. You chose to work from the bottom up through that whole dojo system. Tell me a little bit about that decision and why it was important to you. Okay, so I was in NXT and I felt like I was just plateaued and there was no going up. The only thing that was ever going to happen to me from there was going to be doing more of what I was doing, <laughs> losing in four minutes and then, you know, don't let the door hit you on the ass on the way out, CJ Parker. So I knew that I was dead in the water and I also knew that my wrestling heart was just so sad and when I was eight years old, I didn't get into the business just to walk through the curtain in WWE and be a you know ham and egger. Yeah. I want to wrestle. I want to feel. I want to do it. And if I had to leave there to do it, which I did, and now I'm living, breathing, just all the happiness in the world. I couldn't be happier. I had to do it. I had to get out. I wasn't. I wasn't happy. So uh, I had to leave. And then New Japan fell into my lap and. I knew that if I want, was going to go to New Japan, the best way to do it, to earn everybody's respect, uh, the audience, the wrestlers, the office, the best way to do it is to start from scratch and don't go in with an ego like, oh, I was in NXT. Well, that doesn't matter here. Yeah. So start from the bottom, prove to them you don't have an ego, prove to them that you want it, and prove to them that you belong. So that was the plan. That was my choice right away. I wanted to start from scratch. How tough a system is it? How grueling, how punishing is it? So, I'll, I'll be honest, my, I had a, good, I had a e e pretty easy route. But okay. you know, I was already a trained wrestler. I was sure. doing all that stuff in the performance center for four years. So I was, you know, drilled, drilled, <laughs> drilled, 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 and then drilled some more. Uh, but the, the Japanese system, as far as young boys go, man, it's hard. And they, they find out if you want it, and then they make you question if you want it, and then you have to find, you have to, everybody comes to a row where they think, oh, I can't do it, I can't do it, and we all just tell them, oh, you can do it, you're almost through this, you're eventually not going to be a young boy, you're going to go on to it, you're an ex your excursion, you're come back, and you're going to be a star. And that, com that company is so cool, because from the moment you're a young lion, if you get through that, and you go to the excursion, you come back, you're in with them for life. Yeah. And it is hard, man, those guys, uh, they train, they train, they train, they train. Every day before the shows, they train. Then they're out there. Then they have their match. And then they are then they have their critiques from their match. Then they get out there, and then they second. They run the jackets. and Then they load the bus up. <laughs> then they, they do the stuff at the hotel. Then they have to go do laundry. Then they have to wake up an hour before everybody else to be down. It's, it's just grueling. It's grueling mentally, physically, emotionally. And I've seen so many of them just be broken. Yeah. But the ones that stick through, you know, they got it. Well, you talked earlier about, you know, your wrestling heart. Do you think there's something about being forged again in that fire that reawoken that, re that, that, that wrestling heart? Did uh, well, I tell everybody that what brought my spirit back was the all-star wrestling, Brian Dixon's promotion in, uh, in the UK and uh, working at Butlins. Because yeah. when you think that your, your wrestling spirit is dead, and then you get to wrestle in front of 208 year olds for, uh, five times a week, you know, that pumps you back. And then I was revitalized. And then from there, it's just gotten better and better. But Well, things are going particularly well for you over there at the moment. Um, we saw a recent title win, I believe the first ever American to hold that belt. Yeah. Which is not nothing. But also, let's talk for a minute about uh, this recent G1 mm -hmm. run. Uh, it's, been, it's been quite a phenomenal time for you. Yeah. Well, the G1's always hard, and I've only done two of them, but last year I hurt my knee early, and you know, you can't, you can't back your way out of it. You're in the G1, you better be in the G1, yeah. and you better show up every day, as long as you can walk. And that's my opinion anyways. Uh, and then this year, in June, I broke my hand, so I was like, it was getting better, but then the G1 started, and you know, it's hard enough to wrestle these guys with two good hands, yeah. the best wrestlers in the world, and try to stand out and try to uh, do the best you can. And then when you think about having a broken hand and you're just worried about it, even though you're not worried about it, you're thinking about it and you're worried about it. So next year, I hope I can do the next G1 healthy. 
And if I could do that, that would be a Well, something tells me that a healthy point. Juice Robinson might be a very, very, very real threat. It would threat. be more fun, yeah? It would be easier. I want to talk to you about your debut here in OTT. It's not your first time working in Ireland, but it is your first time working for OTT. Uh, you just came through a hell of a match with Tommy Hiroishi. Yeah. Um, tell us a bit about having a match. I believe it's only the second time you guys have met in singles competition. Yeah, we... Our first one was like a week or two ago in the G1, and uh, that was a pretty good match, but I think last night's match, uh, I enjoyed it a little more. And it might have been because you guys have such a great audience here that are just... They are there, they're there to drink beer, and they're there to watch wrestling, and I love that. And uh, we had a good hard-hitting match, and we both, uh, it wasn't like we came here to take a day off, you know, we <laughs> went hard. And I think the fans could see that, and I think the fans appreciated that. So, it was great. I, I'm totally, totally blown away by how, you guys got a cool thing here, real cool thing. I've heard, oh, OTT, the best fans in the world. Uh, who's gonna say otherwise? Uh, not me. Yeah, no, it's a, it's a it's a pretty special deal, and it's yeah. kind of a, a privilege to be part of it. I have to ask, as you look ahead now, I mean, you're still a young man, you still got an awful lot in front of you. Ambitions, aspirations. Where do you where do you see the next few years taking you? I well, I can't see a ceiling right now in New Japan and everywhere, places yeah. like OTT, all the other great independent promotions around the world. I don't see a ceiling yet. I don't. I don't see that there there needs to be a reason that I change my plan right now, and that's just to wrestle as much as I can, mostly for New Japan. But when I get to do the rare independent mm. book, and especially a place like this, just like a great place that take cares takes care of you, great fans, great wrestlers, it's 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 nice. Uh, but I'm just gonna keep doing what I'm doing, and as long as I'm doing that and I'm happy, then I'll be, I could be doing this the next 10 years, 15 years, I don't know. But there's no, there's no, uh, there's nothing in me that wants to change what I'm doing right now. Well, I think if you keep doing what you're doing, there's gonna be an awful lot of wrestling fans around the world very, very happy to. Juice Robinson, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you, Angus. Thank you, and thank you, OTT.